I'm just about to hit my seven year anniversary on this channel. And for those of you that have been watching all along, thank you. If you've been watching for a week, thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. But I've been reflecting today on what has really changed since 2016 when I launched my channel. One of the things that has changed is the blocking policy of artists. You've heard me talk a lot about that, but why is that important? One of the things I've said all along is that if you demonetize videos and allow people to use the music, that it will retain its relevancy over time. Now, a lot of people thought, oh, I don't believe that. You know, they don't need people making YouTube videos for the Beatles to be relevant or ACDC or any of the people that block, right? They have plenty of followers. It doesn't matter whether you talk about them or not. But is that really true? I don't think it is true, actually. And I've always thought that it wasn't true. So just to give you an idea of how many videos I've made, so I've made almost 1,200 videos in seven years on the channel. Out of those 1,200 videos, I have made videos about ACDC, like the top 10 riffs of ACDC or why ACDC's music makes you move, things like that. I've made many ACDC videos without ever playing an ACDC song on the channel. I've never played a Beatles song on the channel other than me playing or me doing a recreation of it. I've never played Guns N' Roses, not one note of a Guns N' Roses song. I've never played the Eagles, nothing of the Eagles. I've made things, I've played a little bit of a Hotel California solo incorrectly so it wouldn't get blocked. And I've never played one note of a Jimi Hendrix song on my channel. That's because they all block. Eagles, Guns N' Roses, The Beatles, ACDC, Jimi Hendrix. And there's others, but those are the main ones. And these are massively popular groups. But I would argue that they are getting less popular every year since I started my channel. Now, you may not notice it in the Spotify numbers yet, but Jimi Hendrix, for example, has 9.3 million monthly listeners, sub 10. Now, I did this video recently about the top 500 artists on Spotify by monthly listeners. And to get on the list, to be number 500, you had to have nearly 13.5 million monthly listeners. That tells you that Jimi Hendrix isn't even close to that at 9.3 million. He's probably not in the top 1,000. That's hard to imagine, right? And I've said this before, that Jimi Hendrix is being forgotten. Same with ACDC, and I think the same with the Beatles. When I started my channel, when I would mention the Beatles, people loved Beatles videos. They did. I'm a huge Beatles fan. I'm obsessed with Rick Beato videos on YouTube. Wait, who is this? Rick Beato. I don't know who that is. He's a music producer. He's a Beatles fan, so there's a lot of shit ton of Beatles in there, but... Brene hates it when I talk about the Beatles. Now, some bands retain their coolness, even if they haven't released a record, like Nirvana or ABBA, 27.8 million monthly listeners. Huge. Queen, huge. And they've done it, either without their, man, their lead singer, Kurt Cobain has been gone since 1994. That's almost 30 years. But when Kurt Cobain died, he was immortalized at 27 years of age. The thing is that kids really connect with the music. But do kids necessarily connect with the Beatles? I don't think so. I know why the Eagles will be forgotten. Their blocking policy is ridiculous. Don Henley seems to think it doesn't work. The notice and takedown system of the DMCA does not work. Trust me, any Eagles video will get taken down immediately. The net effect of blocking people from actually talking about their music or even doing tutorials on the Eagles, just like you cannot do tutorials on Guns N' Roses. Otherwise, they will block you. What is the sense in that? As time has moved on over these seven years, I've noticed the, the Beatles' influence waning. People in the comment section, oh, I don't want to hear about the Beatles. I like Rick Beato's channel, except he always talks about the Beatles. I never thought the Beatles would go out of style. And people think that Guns N' Roses won't go out of style or ACDC, but they will. They will. There's too much new music out there that young people want to consume that is made by their contemporaries, by other young people. I had Marty Friedman in here recently, and something he said to me when I was driving him down to his show that he didn't say in my interview with him, he said, you know, new music is just getting newer and old music is getting older. And I said, Marty, why didn't you say that in the interview? He said, because I just thought of it. He's so right. New music is getting newer, meaning there's constantly new things coming out by contemporary artists, by young artists. And the further this music gets in the past, you can't even make enough videos about this. And it kind of gets to, to a point that I, I always talk about with my friends, like how well can you know an album? I was born 
when the Beatles were putting out their records, and I experienced them 50 years ago. I didn't have to learn the Beatles if I was born in 1990 or something and and go back to music that was made 30 years before I was born and then try to, to experience the Rolling Stones and Jimi Hendrix and and Black Sabbath and B.B. King and all the music that was made before I existed. Even bands like Nirvana that stopped putting out records in 1993 or maybe they did, you know, they did some releases later. Even that music, if I was born in 1990, would have been music really before I was even aware of the music. And one of the things about being 61 years old now is that I've had time to, to listen to all these things. I don't have to go back and listen to Steely Dan's records to talk about them. I listened to them 50 years ago or any of the artists from back then. I was alive when Jimi Hendrix was alive. You know, I mean, I knew Jimi Hendrix's music when it was coming out. I knew the Beatles music when it was coming out. When Stairway to Heaven was being played on the radio, it was a new song in 1971. I listened to it. Stones records, everything for back then. All the stuff that happened in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. When I talk about Gordon Lightfoot, I experienced Gordon Lightfoot when it was coming out. When I talk about Nirvana, I was 30 years old. What was I, 29 years old when Nevermind came out. I knew Bleach before that, I was in my 20s. I'm contemporaries, I'm, you know, Kurt Cobain was born in 1967. I was born in 1962, Eddie Vedder, 1964, Chris Cornell, what, 1963, something like that. These people are my contemporaries. The guys in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, they've been putting out records since the 80s. And those records I knew back then. The blocking thing. I think people should really rethink them, those artists. I don't know any of these artists. I don't know anyone in the Beatles. I don't know anyone in ACDC. I don't know anyone in the Eagles. I don't know anyone in Guns N' Roses. I don't know anyone in those bands. But one label that I do know that has changed their blocking policy is ECM Records. ECM Records has changed its blocking policy and gone to demonetization. They have the early Pat Metheny records on there, and there's wonderful ECM records, over 2,000 ECM releases since, what, 1969, 1970 years, something like that. A great label of modern jazz and modern classical music. They've changed their policies, maybe in part to me harping on them, telling them that they should change their policies because I had to get permission to make a Keith Jarrett video when I did it two years ago before I interviewed Keith. And the reason that I got an interview with Keith is because he watched my video, the video that I had to get permission. It took me five years to find someone at ECM Records to get permission to make a video on Pat Metheny, and make a video on Keith Jarrett. And there's many other wonderful artists on ECM that I can make videos on now. This is one of the things at my seven year anniversary that I'm proud of is fighting these things and making people aware of these blocking policies and that you can't talk about certain artists on here. Like I said, you will never see a video where I use actual Beatles songs, actual Jimi Hendrix recordings, actual Guns N' Roses recordings. And I know other YouTubers that do Guns N' Roses tutorials that they have taken down and give them copyright strikes which frankly is outrageous. I love Guns N' Roses. It's ridiculous that they block people from playing their songs and teaching them. Why do they want to block people from teaching them? It makes no sense. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, they don't block videos of doing Jimi Hendrix tutorials, but Guns N' Roses does and the Eagles do, and it's ridiculous. That's all I'm gonna say about this. Thank you so much for watching my channel all these years. I wanted to bring this up again. I think this is an important thing to keep coming back to because it has changed over the years and it's important to keep harping on these things. Thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe. See you later.